Welcome to Two Hypnotherapists Talking with me, Denise Billen Mejia in Delaware, USA. And me, Martin Ferber in Preston, UK. This weekly podcast is for anyone and everyone who would like to know more about the fascinating subject of hypnosis and the benefits it offers. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and psychotherapist. I'm a retired medical doctor turned consulting hypnotist. We are two hypnotherapists talking. So let's get on with the episode. Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about stress, huh? Yeah, apparently <laughs> it's Stress Awareness Month, a whole month of it, today. It's April. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, they, they also, part of my stress is the number of hallmark moments we have. Everything's got a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought we were working on women, <laughs> Physicians Day. We had Physicians Day was last week. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it was a marketing thing in the UK, wasn't it, when we started having all these different weeks, you know, like National Sausage Week or mm -hmm. National Meat Pie Week or whatever. Um. <laughs> So as a, as a as a vendor as a as a person who markets in, in order to have more clients come to you, mm. do you find this stressful? <laughs> <laughs> do I find it stressful? Uh, I did at first, not now, because mm -hmm. um, first of all, I had to get over that thing of realizing I am the product and putting myself yeah. out there. I mean, if somebody's only ever come across me in the last couple of years, they're going to think, "Oh my God, this guy's so in your face. He's out there." His, his mm -hmm. name's on everything, his face is on everything. And that can give people a perceived image, um, mm -hmm. which is probably about as far removed from myself as a person as you could get, because um, mm -hmm. I'm actually an incredibly private person. <laughs> and before I became a therapist, I never put my name to anything. Anything, yeah. Um, you know, well, same I mean, thing. I mean, I signed a lot of legal documents because I was a doctor, but mm. I didn't. I didn't go out asking people to come to my ER. I was very happy when people didn't have to come to the ER. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, said that in the states, a lot of doctors do advertise, don't they, themselves? You know, when they private offices. But I was yeah. never in private practice. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but I remember seeing that when I was over there on holiday, reading newspapers all those years ago. Um, solicitors and doctors mm -hmm. took up a lot of the advertising space in the newspapers. Well, solicitors particularly. Yeah, <laughs> and solicitors that suit doctors. <laughs> yeah, that too, that too. However, for the purposes of this car recording, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, going we to talk about... Already. <laughs> I do think I do think it's important, though, to acknowledge that stress is stress, whether it's good or bad. Mm. Um, a, there's a young lady getting married on Saturday here. There's probably several all over the world, but um, she sent me a, a message, uh, our assembly is uh, handling the wedding. Um, and she sent a message to make sure she, she had all her bits of paper in and she'd gotten everything done. And I wrote back, yes, we've got everything now. Thank you. Now remember, deep, slow breaths. <laughs> 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 because, you know, she's on the countdown. She's getting married Saturday. It's a few days from now. <laughs> well, th th this is one of those things. I've said it before. Okay, the, the biggest things in our lives we're supposed to look forward to supposed to give us the most joy getting married buying our first home or renting our first home having a kid yep learning <laughs> to drive buying a car having children getting married they're also the most stressful mm -hmm. yes and, yet, and then you've got the ones that are obviously upsetting as well as stressful which is well, death, like bereavement. dealing with probate yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dealing with probate <laughs> yeah. is a really extremely major stressful one. extremely stressful yeah um yeah so it, it's like is there good stress and bad stress well yes because you want all those things in the first list to happen mm. and the other things are inevitable i mean eventually not maybe not probate but certainly mm -hmm. it is it is a um, a given that none of us will leave her alive as they say mm. um but it is in the moment is very stressful because it's a change of your circumstances. Mm. But it's just like when you say that's what gets me out of bed every morning. It is something tells you I have to react to this, whatever this is. And in the case of getting up, it's probably opening your eyes and realizing good time on the clock. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's well, a little I've, I've been writing about this month as well for my newspaper articles with it being stress mm -hmm. awareness month. And I, I was sort of trying to explain how we need to have that sweet spot. Okay. So when we're stressed, we fire up amongst other things, cortisols and adrenalines, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. And 
that's the same thing that gets us out of bed in the morning and motivates us, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> waiting for a nom there, Denise. <laughs> yes. Yes, dear. <clears throat> okay, so then when when does it cease to be good stress and become bad stress? So say for example, <laughs> say for example, I want to ace some kind of presentation at work. Okay. I I would get some bad stress, I get some adrenaline and cortisol, maybe start to worry a little bit. Will it be okay? Will it go right? But also that's the same stress that would motivate me to do it in a good way. And also, because I always say it's like to learn anything in life, you've got to push yourself out of that comfort zone, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and don't, don't just cortisol. We do need it. Yeah. If you don't have it, you have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that perhaps the issue is not whether it's good or bad. It's whether you have so much of it and your own level of tolerance will vary mm. but you know if you're planning a wedding and then there's a flood in your house because well here because plumbing goes bad but um you know just it'll be something that you could normally ma manage without any problem at all but you you're already using all of your anxiety threads mm. right now and that's that one thing just tips you over the edge. Yeah, no, That's so, when people think of it as, as bad stress. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just giggling to myself there, Denise, because this very week last year, in the space of a week, if you recall, oh, yes. my car <laughs> engine blew up, my house flooded, my best friend of 40 years died, and my cat died all in the space of a week. Yeah. Um, and I, I can remember commenting at the time, feeling this, I wouldn't say serenity about me, but feeling this ability to cope with it all and thinking, I'm mm -hmm. so glad I was trained in dealing with stress. <laughs> <laughs> but having that having been said, I, I don't feel I was too far away from the old metaphorical stress bucket overflowing had one more mm -hmm. thing happened, for example. Right. Um, I, I think um, that uh, might have just sort of tip me over the edge as it were and my abilities to cope <laughs> what what do you use in order to cope with it apart from all the good things like deep breathing and relaxing and giving yourself time to i try or whatever I, mm -hmm. I try to sleep well or as people say these days engage good sleep hygiene um mm -hmm. i do try to sleep well currently now our clocks have just gone forward over here and okay the mornings are still okay but i know another month from now it's going to be daylight at like five in the morning um mm -hmm. and go on, on until days almost when 10. i don't need to be up at that time <laughs> yeah yeah um so that concerns me um i don't have very much trouble getting to sleep at night um i do again stress signature when my mind is too overloaded then i may well wake up extra early and not be able to get back to bed Mm -hmm. That's, that would say is one of my stress signatures. So when that happens, not necessarily in the insomnia, but in recognizing that you're overstressed mm. the, and you're not enjoying it, it's not, mm. it's not a fun thing you're doing. What sorts of things do you change in order to? Okay. Well, this is, this is the thing. Ideally for me, the best possible thing for me to do is to make sure I take two hours out of the day and go for a really long walk. There's two particular yeah. long walks I like to do where I live. Um, unfortunately, where I live, we get more rain here than I don't know where else in the country. Um, I'm just on the West Pennines. It's a very, very rainy area. And when it's raining mm. too heavily, you know, it, there's no pleasure in, in yeah. doing a four mile uphill walk and and there's possibly some danger involved yes yeah, possibly as well traffic and whatever mm -hmm. I, I still say it and it, it's the simplest of things for me going for a really good long walk to the point where you don't feel inclined to do it the first 20 minutes you're just thinking i wish i was back at home but after you've mm -hmm. gone to about 40 minutes it's like wow when you're just in the moment and that's how long mm -hmm. it takes me to de-stress get in the moment excuse me <clears throat> and really enjoy the walk um, yeah. and that I haven't, absolutely de-stresses me that and, is one of my lifelong uses particularly if i was angry about something i would mm. go, and if it was raining i loved it i loved to walk in the rain 
and yeah. get soaking wet and just to get to the end of my walk. Um, and that helped me de-stress. Nowadays, that's less available to me. Okay, so when uh, you used to do that, though, like you say, if you were angry, maybe you'd had an argument with somebody or a disagreement, maybe even a professional disagreement or something, mm -hmm. would you unravel that argument in your head during the walk? Yes. Or would you be able to forget yes. that argument during the walk? No, I didn't forget it. I replayed it. Mm. But I was going to do that if I was sitting at my desk, too. Mm. So if I had the opportunity to walk it off, I, I was maybe it's just some version of an EMDR where you were you using your body whilst something else is, mm. um, while something else is playing. But I haven't been able to do that that much the last few years. Okay. When we moved, it became uh, and setting up business in the house. Mm. I still will go for walks for you know twenty minutes or so, but really long walks mm. tend to be weekend things. Yeah, well, but still, sense. even if I'm not actually cross and needing to have an argument with somebody in my head, it's <laughs> it, on the weekends. Just having had that exercise is going to mm. help me cope with the various, like the, dealing with the bank this morning. And I just remembered I've got to call the repair man to come and give me the estimate he said he was going to do last Tuesday. Oh right. Um, <laughs> those cases are niggling stresses for me. I don't have very many huge ones. I've mm. had them in the past. Everybody does. But it's the niggly ones that just put you out of sorts because it should be so simple to do this. Why don't you just make a phone call? <laughs> mm. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, it's, I mean, for me, what I've done is because as uh, as we all know from our very short episode a few weeks ago, I've been under sort of like huge pressure and had a, a massive workload to deal with this last couple of months, as, as have we both actually. Um, and I did miss a few days of my walking I could really feel the difference mm -hmm. um, so I've made the most of the Easter weekend and gone on some really long walks and every day between now and next Monday I am planning and have fitted into my diary two hours a day to do some serious walking and I know I that, for... that that will help me with my sleep and I'll be feeling so much better yeah it's another reminder for those of us who have people schedule their appointments to Put the things that we don't want them interrupting in there too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was going to go for a walk but oh i felt three clients oh. um <laughs> do you yeah. refer to a sort of metaphorical stress bucket with your clients Denise? i occasionally do but that's based on you um, <laughs> 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 um it, i just just refer to space i mean i, I my my visualization is somebody good <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I mean, we're, we've got one right now, as you know, Francisco does contract work and mm. he was the, the the last contract ended in February, usually takes a month or two to get something else. Um, and it just feels like it's taking longer. Actually, when I think about it, right, plotted out, it's actually taking the same amount of time. But, but, and, it, and it is money that says we can live quite well without either of us having new money coming in we've got savings but it's still stressful and he likes working yeah and yeah. i don't want to listen to him talking about engineering so that's fine <laughs> but but um where every time somebody tells him something you, know, you get the headhunter calls you first you say yes i might be interested in that and then you have a conversation with somebody then you have a formal interview that you know it's just that in itself is stressful mm even yeah, though it's potentially good and and nothing bad will happen because the worst thing that can happen is he won't decide to take that job or they'll decide not to employ him yeah that's and so that's not there's no negative aspect to it but, no, but it's, it's still again, it's one of those things we look forward to but it's so so stressful well it's, um, i think it's mainly that you don't know the outcome is going to be that's it it's that thing of the unknown isn't it it's that uncertainty mm. that uncertainty that that is a stressor for most people Mm -hmm. um but also this thing i mean i i've had it a few times with people that i've spoken to like you know since i've been a therapist and going for an interview is one of the most stressful things and it's you know they say to me they can rehearse 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 read up read up read up find out everything about the company before the interview they get to the interview and the mind just goes blank <laughs> yeah i think that's a sort of stage fright that's what the 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 worst thing actually feared more than death in some statistics is is public, public speaking. speaking and it's yeah. the same thing you don't know but i used to get it with exams at school mm. 
I, I would revise. I, I would do the work in the term. No problems with my term work. Yep. Um, Sit but down. Exams, just complete mental block. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is something hypnotherapy is good at helping with. Yes. And the thing I should try and stress to people is so once you've been hypnotized formally, you will have learned how to do this for yourself. Mm. So, although you may enjoy going to a hypnotist and the chatty part of it, you, you would be able to apply if you've, if you've gone to a hypnotist because you want to deal with public speaking or you want to deal with bad sleep patterns or mm. whatever. The very things that we put in place for that will help you with all the other things in life. It's life is stress, right? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I mean, also, I mean, with, with, with clients as well, and I know you do this as well, um, is giving them the other tools or, or suggestions mm -hmm. that they need to engage in mentally healthy behavior and keep themselves fresh and keep, keep the mind, mm -hmm. you know, in a good place. Um, you know, explaining the benefits of walking because it's okay saying, so, you know, oh, go for a walk, you feel better. People like to know why. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying they need a full scientific breakdown, but when we explain how our minds work and things and just how these benefits us, people feel more empowered. And I think when people feel more empowered, they're more inclined to do something, aren't they? Right. But don't want to leave people thinking they have to go walking. No. Stress. You do. It's a good idea to walk, but you could, I, I think one of my more stressful things that I can remember the situation was when a friend's husband died. Mm. This is several years ago. There have been several since then. I've reached that age. But I had gone to the hospital, was with her and her family. Mm. And we knew it was, it was inevitable. And I left around 2 or 3 a.m. And got a text a, a couple of hours later that he had passed. And she had loads of family, but her immediate family was around and family were flying in from all over. She did not need me physically to be there, but I, for my own stress, had to do something. So I made soup. Do you have any idea how therapeutic it is to chop vegetables, especially if you don't care what shape they are? It really was very, very therapeutic. And I, I remember it. I remember what the recipe was because I had pulled it out of something. <laughs> and since then, I've always known it by as his name, Soup. Soup, right? Okay. <laughs> well, well, now I can relate to that because, as I've said quite a few times now as well, one of my big um, things to de-stress is to play random music on YouTube where I make the first selection and YouTube selects the rest of it. Um, oh. do the ironing at the same time and I completely ironing is a out. stress reliever there is <laughs> yeah yeah as long as you don't move so, your fingers um yes, or, or the or the clothes but it, well but. yeah that happens now and again um but because you've got to get in the moment you've got to concentrate seriously so you don't burn your fingers and because you're blasting music out and you don't know what's coming next I just get completely into that moment um, mm -hmm. that's how I can forget things that's that, that's a kind of forgetting de-stress to unravel things right. in my mind it's, that's when I go and do a walk it's not so much you've forgotten it but you've laid it aside for now yeah I'm able to yeah. put put those thoughts aside and get in the moment of just doing the ironing and listening to the music mm -hmm. um but as I say to unravel things to sort things out in my head um to put it in layman's you go for a walk a good long walk <laughs> a good long walk does the job every time for me yeah. Um, and absolutely, I've made plenty of time this week to really get back into it. No excuses now. The workloads are lightening. The days are lighter. The evenings are longer. Mm -hmm. and it stopped no, you had, you've had two major projects that have come up. So, you know, you've yeah. your new teaching one and the one for PAC. So it's it's a lot of... It's full on. It's full on. Um, to the yeah, point it's where... good stress. It's good yeah. stress, but it's stress. It's good and stress. It takes up mental, it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it takes up mental bandwidth. And then something that you don't particularly enjoy comes along and wants to get into. It's too yeah. much. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm just getting on with it. So just going back then a minute ago, because I was saying about a metaphorical stress bucket. Mm -hmm. I, I would imagine a lot of our viewers and listeners, you know, have never been clients of mine and may not be that familiar with the term. So I thought we could just explain oh, okay. it a little bit. Is that okay? Please do. Please do. It's your, it's your expression, although I know you did not mint it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. No, far from it. Um, you know, MHFA England refer to a stress container. Lots of therapists I know over here mm -hmm. refer to a stress bucket, as do I. And basically, we just say that our vulnerability to stress is dictated, first of all, by the size of the bucket. 
Um, mm -hmm. As in the bigger the bucket, the more stress we can handle without it overflowing. Do you think you acquire a bigger bucket because you have been taught as a child to handle stress well? Yes, because you've, you've got an ability to deal with things to, in, in all kinds of things, that sort of emotional maturity. Um, mm -hmm. As you're being taught as you grow up, how to deal with situations, how to form, maintain, and when necessary, end relationships, for example, friendships, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and how to cope with things without losing control. And I think, mm -hmm. yeah, but also sort of conversely, if a child um, faced a lot of insecurity when they were younger, if they were bullied, if perhaps um, that their parents either didn't or weren't able to look after them so well, that, that mm -hmm. person may grow up to have a, a smaller stress bucket um, and may also be more vulnerable to having a lot of stressors put in there. Mm -hmm. So we say that the ability to handle stress is dictated by the size of the bucket. So the bigger the bucket, the more stress we can carry with us. And then you shouldn't at... feel the need to walk around with a filled up bucket all the time. No, no, no. Just you, can. You, you're preempting <laughs> my next bit. So the next bit is how we <laughs> empty it on a daily basis. Um, mm. You know, we do say that there's always a little bit of stress left in the bottom um, mm -hmm. for all of us. Um, but we, what we say is, one, you want to limit the amount of stress that goes in there. And we talk about that and also um, engaging in the kind of behavior which encourages the bucket to drain on a, you know, sort of on a daily and on a longer term basis. Mm -hmm. So the, the one on a daily basis we talk about is the REM sleep, um, but also other things. And we, we're talking therapy over here about the four P's, um, which is sort of positive actions, positive interactions, positive thinking. And the fourth P is purpose, having a purpose, finding mm -hmm. a purpose if needs be. Usually important. Mm, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's like it's having that sense of belonging as well, isn't it? Um, I was... Have a, sub, have a support system. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, but also, as, you know, as humans, we all need to feel that sense of belonging, don't we? Whether it's within our communities, whether it's within our religion, mm -hmm. whether it's within our college um or whether it's within a group of friends that we play certain sports with we all like that sense of belonging don't we mm -hmm. um, and i think if we don't have that that's when our sort of mental well-being can suffer um because even people who like their own company an awful lot i don't think in my experience anyway that anybody likes to be completely alone most of the time no. some do few no, but even people who say that they are introverted, they just need to have some alone time mm. to decompress after being in a party of several hundred people. This is, a, this is the perfect time to have a stress week. Mm. It's the last month you've got to get your taxes done. That's a really stressful thing, even though you know you'll have a wonderful endorphin rush when you finish them. Yeah. Especially, especially a little ticker in the corner is coming up green and you're going to get money back. <laughs> um, and yet every, everybody borrows trouble, one of my favorite expressions, um, in, in, and procrastinates it, which makes the problem worse mm. and they're thinking about it all the time. And this is true, of, I think, of, of anything you don't want to do. The longer you put it off, <laughs> the more stress you're going to have in dealing with it. But, but conversely, the bigger the reward when you finally get around to doing it. Yes, but that would imply that it's a good thing to do. No, no, I'm not saying it's a good thing to do. I'm just oh. saying that it is a bigger reward. I, I used to. Well, yeah, then I, would, then I wouldn't call it a reward because I think yeah. it will give you, your subconscious will say, oh, let's wait until the night before. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I used to be a, a, a devil for doing this in my previous business. We used to have to do a VAT return every quarter. And I used to mm -hmm. put it off and put it off and put it off because it was a load of paperwork. I'm talking pre-QuickBooks era. Mm -hmm. um, a load of paperwork, every single invoice, every single receipt um, for everything you've purchased, every single invoice for everything you've sold, and you get the whole lot, stack them up, itemize them, write them out, work it all out. And when when I'd done it, though, I'd always leave it to the very last minute. Um, always, always, always. And when I'd done it, I used to feel fantastic. And I always, every single time, used to think, why did I leave it so long? Next quarter, I am not going to do that. And every single quarter I did. <laughs> when you were saying 
the next quarter. You're already in the next quarter by the time you file the yep. last one. So now, why do you think that that sense of reward was better when you'd had, uh, how, how long do you have to file for? It's, it's the 31st of March and you have to file by the end yeah, you've got to of file, April? Or? If your quarter ended 31st of March, you'd have to file by the 30th of April. Okay. And then when so, they went digital, you got an extra seven days grace, and I used to push it to that as well. It was nice. I, I it wasn't think so much. I think the main thing was the news. I always used to have to pay a lot of money on my VAT. So oh, well, fair enough. I just didn't like doing it. <laughs> it was like unpaid Doesn't... tax collector for the government. Yes, it's what, yes. what you call purchase tax over there or sales tax. Yeah. Um, sales tax. Yeah. Which you yeah, I, I think that was a deep rooted on. subconscious thing. I'd just be grudged doing it, um, you know, as an unpaid tax collector for the government. <laughs> I just think, though, that all of the niggling stress that you had mm. going up to it, I mean, you, you knew you had the money in the bank. You knew that yeah. you, you know, it, it wasn't that kind of stress, which a lot of people have. Mm. I mean, it just takes, you know, over here, it's one medical disaster and your budget's completely shot. Oh yeah, over there. I mean, it doesn't have to be that big an issue either. Um, but why did you feel what what made you continue to put it off? Do you still do this? No, I know no. it's not the same. You don't. No, it's not so the, you, you just it's not the same volume either. No, it's not the same volume, and everything's done on QuickBooks these days. So I just fill it in as I go along, and when you want to know how much you owe, you just press a button and it tells you. Ah, uh, okay. Do you, do you significantly miss the feeling of reward that you got at the end of your procrastination moments? I can live or without you... it. I can live without <laughs> it. <laughs> but, um, okay, I feel quite de-stressed. By... Yeah, I hope our viewers and listeners feel de-stressed after this episode. <laughs> and do remember that although hypnotists in conversation on podcasts go all over the place, when we have a particular client in front of us, we can focus completely Absolutely. on what that Absolutely. client's issue is. But we'll catch you on the next one, Vinny. All right, dear. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. We hope you've enjoyed listening. Please remember this podcast is designed to give you an insight into therapeutic hypnosis and is for educational purposes only. So remember, consult with your own healthcare professional if you think something you've heard may apply to you or a loved one. If you found this episode useful, you can apply for free continuing professional development or CME credit using the link provided in the show notes. Feel free to contact either of us through the links in the show notes. Join us again next week.